Hi, everybody. I wanted to take a little time today to respond to a question that I often get. And I recently did a video not too long ago on a very short uh, two and a half minute um, glimpse of when you have to remove a kid from the classroom. Should you remove them? Should you not remove them? Everybody always hears me say, keep it in the classroom. Keep them with you whenever possible. And I still, still really believe that. But I think we need to really clearly define in our schools and our classrooms what is out of control. So let me give you a couple of examples. If I'm sitting in the back of the classroom and I don't want to participate and I'm sitting under a table with a blanket over my head, I'm not out of control. So we manage that. We keep teaching. We manage it. You're not ignoring it. You're managing it. Give yourself more credit than that when people say, am I just ignoring it? No, I'm managing it. So if someone comes in and does an evaluation and says, were you ignoring that child not participating? You can say, no, I'm clearly managing it. So Let's say the child is be under the table with a blanket on their head and they start kicking a chair. They're now making noises. Eh, it's getting a little bit more disruptive, but it's not out of control. Now here's the real thing that I want you to think about. When they escalate to the point where now they start kicking the chairs over and your alarm goes off in your head and says, are other children going to get hurt maybe? Or can I no longer teach because the level is so escalated? So if that question in your head and you answer it yes, the next thing is going to be, what are we going to do in response? Is it out of control or is it in control? Look at that child. If they've escalated it over a little time and they're looking at you to see what they're, you're going to do, you've got to ask yourself, is that really out of control? Maybe not. So they're thinking, if I want to get tossed out, I know exactly what to do. So you know where I'm going with this, right? If I want to get tossed out and go to the office or go to whatever office or wherever I need to get to go, I know how to make it happen. So here's the thing. You still have to have them leave because they have now escalated it to a point where it's a problem. But we have to say it's not out of control, but we got to respond. We may call our person in our plan, or we have someone come and pick up the child, or if we have a place to send the child, depending upon their age, um, they go. But here's the thing. If they've done this for the purpose of getting tossed out, that's not the time that they get counseling, de-escalation, um, or a fun time or a conversation about how their weekend went. We know they have problems. We know they have really challenges maybe in their life. But this is not the time for us to give them that attention. This is the time when they have to be removed from the classroom. They're sitting in a designated area. Maybe they're coloring. Maybe they're just sitting there by themselves. But they're not getting a lot of our attention. That's because they were totally in control of it, and we know there was a function for that behavior. The different scenario, the child escalates it like you didn't even see it coming. We've all had that happen. Like, I said, good morning. What did I say? And chairs are flying. The child is upset. The child comes in, you know, loaded like that, is rolling around, is screaming, is swearing, is throwing things, whatever. Now you're going to do the same thing. You call for that assistance or whatever because now the child needs some help. They're going to go at a place or wherever they're designated to go, counselor, behavior specialist, whatever you have in place for that child because you know what's going to happen. That sounds a little bit more like out of control which means that when they go to that office, they do need some assistance in de-escalating, validating their feelings, pulling themselves together, and perhaps learning some skills to be able to reintegrate into the classroom. That's much more time consuming. It's much more deliberate. And the child may actually be out of your classroom for a lengthier amount of time because they are not in control. So there are two different scenarios here. So it's about the timing. Does the first child need help and assistance? Yes, but not as a result of their controlled escalation. Does the second child need assistance right away? Yes, as a result of their out of controlled escalation. So as we get to know these kids a little bit more and we start to really differentiate and look for these things, we can make that decision, okay, I know what to do now. Put your plans in place. I know we all have limited resources when it comes to who do we call, when do we call, but whatever you do, really look at the situation. A child with their head down, a kid who won't take his hood off, someone who won't participate, won't pick up their things, is sitting under the table refusing to move. You're okay, you're okay. There's no danger, you can manage that. 
Let's get together on this and decide what we're gonna do with the children when that happens so we all don't feel like we're gonna get out of control. This can be confusing, uh, what I was just talking about, um, because it's a lot of content. Um, so if you have questions, if you have feelings about this, if you've had experiences, I you know, am not in your situation, not being able to know everything about children you might ask questions about, but share your comments and, and share your thoughts about it, because I'm sure there's other people who are watching this video today that are experiencing this, and they may have some brilliant ideas around it as well. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. I speak and consult on school behavior, and I love to help districts solve some of these problems. See you next time.